Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here, talking about volumes by slicing, which is something that you might do in a calculus with integrals right after we've talked about finding area between curves. Uh, so here I've got uh, two curves. I've got some region that's bounded by these curves. The bottom is just the x-axis, y equals zero, and this top is an upper semicircle here, y equals the square root of 36 minus x squared. So it's a uh, semicircle it has radius 6. Um, my leftmost point here is at negative 6 and my rightmost point here is at 6. If we were just going to find the area of this region, so we would look at doing the integral from a to b of the top function minus the bottom function if I draw my rectangle let's say this way vertically. So if I draw it vertically Top function minus the bottom function would be the root formula minus zero. Minus zero wouldn't change anything. So we would just get root 36 minus x squared dx. From a to b would be from negative 6 to 6. We could go from 0 to 6 and double it due to the symmetry. Not going to go into that too much here. Um, this integral itself is actually a little bit meh to deal with, so we're not going to actually work this, but I just want to make sure that we remember this idea. The idea with volume by slicing is going to be not how to find area using this rectangle, but imagine laying this region sort of down on the desk. And this rectangle is no longer just a rectangle that I'm using to fill the space to find area within an integral. This rectangle is actually going to be the base for some shape on top of it. And I'm going to build the same shape over and over and over and get a volume, uh, basically by making a bunch of slices that are a similar shape. So we're going to look at how we'll do that. The first type of slice that I'm going to use, I'm going to build uh, semicircular slices on top of my semicircular region. So let's take a look at how that will work. So if I look at this here and I think about all of my rectangles that would run through the region and I'm stacking semicircle slices on top of each of those rectangles, then I would add up all the areas on top of those rectangles to give me a volume. So where normally we're doing an in, summing an infinite number of lengths to give us area, we are now summing an infinite number of areas to give us volume. Hopefully that makes some sense there. So now looking at what we have here, um, so we have a bunch of cross sections or slices that are semicircles. Um, the way we'll do volume, and the way a lot of books will do this, is they will say, well, volume will be the integral from A to B, just like before. Um, they'll use something sometimes like A of X DX. And this A of X is really what you have to determine in each situation. And it is, what is the formula for the area of each slice? So if you look at this one slice that I have kind of through the middle of the region, how do I find a formula for the area of any slice, no matter where it is? Okay, so if we look at the base, remember that this curved part was y equals the square root of 36 minus x squared. And this line over here was y equals 0. And this point way over here is at x equals negative 6. And this point way over here is at x equals 6. Um, this one sort of toward the middle as far as a slice goes, so it's giving us quite a bit of area. The slices down at the end are much smaller. They're not going to provide much area in terms of volume, so each one gives us a different amount. I need to figure out a formula for A of X. So A of X is going to be the area of each semicircular slice. So this will depend on the shape. This is a semicircle, so what's the area of a semicircle? Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So if I want a half circle or a semicircle, then the area formula should be 1 half pi r squared. That would be half a circle as the area for each slice. So the trick then is figuring out what do I put in for r. The rest of this, no problem. I got to figure out what is r. So if I go over here and I say, well, radius would kind of be along this edge here. The problem is this line here is not the radius of this semicircle. It is the diameter. It's all the way across, right? 
So if you can imagine, how would we get a radius? Well, think about like a point here, only half of this line, right, would be a radius. That would be an R for us. So what is that? Well, it would be half that distance from the root down to zero. In other words, this distance is going to be the square root of 36 minus x squared divided by two is really what we've got. So that's what we'll go in for our radius there. Let's go ahead and put that in our a of x. So our a of x is going to equal one half pi, and then we'll have a root of 36 minus x squared over two, that's a radius, squared. We would do some simplifying here. Um, I'm gonna kinda do this all in one shot. So if I square, that will take care of the root, the root will go away. If I square the two on the bottom, that's gonna give me a four. And then if I have four times this two that's also on the bottom, that's gonna give me an eight, right? So I really have, keep the pi, I have pi over two times four, which is eight. And then again, the square gets rid of the root, and we have this. So our volume for this object with all these semicircular slices would be the integral from negative 6 to 6, pi over 8, 36 minus x squared dx. And this would just be power rules. Uh, you could bump the pi over 8 out. We're not going to work out the full integral in this one. We're just going to set it up and give you the idea for slicing here. Okay, let's look at another one. This time we're going to do a volume, but we're going to do it with um, a different type of slice. We're going to do square-shaped slices. So same base, right? But the volume that we're building on top of this region is going to have all of its slices as a square shape. So you can see the volume takes on a very different tone, especially as you look at sort of the top contours of the shape there. So let's look at how to build volume with this one. So if we have square slices, right? So our volume, again, is going to equal the integral from a to b, formula for the area of each slice, integral dx, right? Okay, so what is the area for this? Well, this one's not so bad, right? I need the area of a square. Well, square is simply going to equal uh, whatever the side length is squared, right? Side times side, they're the same. So this length here, and we already have a formula for this, so this length we already know from before, right? This was square root 36 minus x squared. So that's the side of one side length I need to square that, right? So side squared is going to be the square root of 36 minus x squared squared, in other words, 36 minus x squared. So very similar, right, based on the shape of the base. So our volume for this one would be the integral from negative 6 to 6 of simply 36 minus x squared dx. And again, you can work this out. This isn't too bad, just power rule plugging in. You should be able to get something for this, I think. But let's go ahead and do uh, one more similar but a different shape. This one's a little bit more complicated. Uh, we're going to actually build equilateral triangles on top. So you notice we get a nice little slant on one side of the volume as we build this. Uh, looks more rounded on one side, but the other side has a nice slant surface to it. Uh, so we've got equilateral triangles we're going to build, and we're going to go ahead and do that. Again, volume is going to equal, I'm going to get me some room here, integral from a to b, a of x dx. Our base is the same, so we're still going to be going from negative 6 to 6. Uh, we need to figure out what's the formula for this equilateral triangle area that we're dealing with. So area. Well, area of this equilateral triangle, any triangle, I guess, you could say something like 1 half base times height. There are some other ways to do this, but let's just say you go with this. This is a pretty common way that people will say area for a triangle. So base, I think we have down, right? The base is just going to be this distance, and we already know that this distance is the square root of 36 minus x squared from all our other stuff. And then the question becomes, what is the height, right? What is this height? 
Well, you can do a lot of things with this, I guess. You could do some, maybe some trigonometry. Um, if you know this is equilateral, you know that this is 60 degrees. So if you wanted to figure out some things, you could do it a bunch of different ways. If you already know stuff about similar triangles, you could just figure it out that way. Um, you could figure it out using uh, maybe this half of a right triangle here, and you could say something like, well, let's see, uh, tangent of 60 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, and this would just be half of it, right? So it would be root 36 minus x squared over 2. Uh, lots of things you can do there. Um, so if I simplify tangent of 60, we'll get root 3. I can go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by 2 if I want um, and get something like this instead. Uh, so we're getting close to figuring out what h is. So if I go ahead and uh, multiply both sides by the root on the bottom and divide both sides by 2, um, and don't worry too much about simplifying at this point in time, then I would get root 3 over 2 times this square root. And we could do some different things with simplifying there, but that would be our h. So this one, a little bit more to deal with as far as getting the a of x, right? Um, not as nice as a square, obviously. But now we can go ahead and take this and put it in there, put our base in there as well. Um, the nice thing is if we had one half base times height, then that's one half times the root, 36 minus x squared, and then the height. This really gives us another root three over two and gives us another of the same root. So it actually allows us to get rid of the root and combine those. So if we go ahead and turn this into a nice formula all in one, we're going to get something like First of all, integral negative 6 to 6 hasn't changed. I'll go ahead and combine this. I could put it out front, but I'll just leave it in the integral for now. So I'd have a root 3 on top. 2 times 2 on the bottom would give me a 4 there. And then the two roots multiplied together would just give me a 36 minus x squared. So we'd integrate all of that dx from negative 6 to 6. Okay, hopefully this gives you an idea. It's really the same thing, but you're building area on top of each rectangle to create volume. So we're integrating infinite number of areas to give volume by slicing. All right, good luck with this.